One message that every parent gives their teenage daughter about dating is never yield to pressure. That guideline applies not only to dating and teenagers, but also to your Scrum Master compensation negotiation. The purpose of this sprint is to prepare you to handle pressure tactics in salary negotiations. By the end of this sprint, you'll have a specific negotiating approach called go to the balcony and language to use that will help you handle pressure tactics and even some dirty tricks. So I'll tell you a true story from one of my apprentices, Jean. A few weeks ago, Jean showed up at our regular Scrum Master Apprentice mentoring cohort with a disturbing story. She said, well, I got a job offer via email and I was really excited about it. But yesterday I had a phone conversation with the recruiter, Sophia, and she asked me some questions that made me really uncomfortable. So I asked her, what did Sophia ask you that made you so uncomfortable? Jean took a deep breath and said, okay, here we go. I wrote them down because I was so surprised. She asked me, Jean, are we your top choice? And do you have any other offers? And if we come up to your salary number, will you accept the position right away? Wow, I said. What did you think when you heard those questions? Jean said, well, at the time, I thought Sophia was just being rude, and I was kind of shocked. It threw me off balance. But now I'm wondering if those questions were hardball negotiating tactics. I said, yes, those were negotiating tactics, and it sounds like they were kind of hardball. They're specifically designed to put pressure on you. Unfortunately, some organizations actually train the recruiters to ask precisely those questions. And in some cases, they are dirty tricks designed to put pressure on you and throw you off balance. That's why it helps to go in prepared for those. But then Jean asked, I understand the value of going in prepared, but how in the world would I prepare for dirty tricks like that? I said, great question. There's a principle in negotiation made famous by the program on negotiation at Harvard Law School. It's called go to the balcony. It means take a break. The first step here is not to control the other person's behavior. Instead, it's to control your own. So do you remember how you felt when that recruiter launched that attack on you? She said, how could I forget? I felt kind of stunned and pressured to give in. I even felt kind of defensive and I thought about counterattacking. I said, exactly. All of those are normal reactions to dirty tricks in negotiation. So when you use the go to the balcony tactic, you suspend your reaction by naming the game and buying yourself time to think. Responding with a go to the balcony tactic helps you keep your eyes on the prize, so to speak. Instead of getting mad or getting even, you focus on getting what you want. Jean thought about that for a minute. Then she said, I understand that in theory, but can we look at some actual language that I could use to respond? I said, absolutely. Let's revisit each of those dirty trick questions and talk about how you could respond in a way to take a break and give yourself time to respond versus react. The first one was, Jean, are we your top choice? So a couple of ways you could respond could be, you certainly are in the top three that I'm considering. That sends them a subtle or not so subtle message. bargaining position. Also, another thing you could say would be, you're certainly one of my top choices for sure. That sends the same message of strength and confidence on your side and that you do have choices. Jean said, okay, Kelly, that helps. What about the second one? That one really made me feel pressured and like I didn't have any way out. It was when Sophia asked me, Jean, if we come up in salary to your number, will you accept the position immediately? I said, okay, let's deal with that one right now. One way you could go to the balcony on this one could be for you to say, you meeting my salary ask would certainly make it a strong position. 
I would need to go back and compare how your overall offer compares to others on total compensation, including vacation days, health care, retirement, stocks, bonus, and other benefits. So again, that sends them a message that they're not your only option, even if they are in that moment, and maybe they're not even your best option. It makes your bargaining position stronger and theirs weaker. Jean looked relieved. She said, it really helps me to have actual language that I can use. I'm going to print it out and tape it up on my computer so I can use it during the actual interview. Now, can we talk about Sophia's third question that made me feel pressured? It was, do you have any other offers? <laughs> when she asked me that, I kind of felt like it was an invasion of my privacy. I exclaimed, I can totally understand why you would feel that way. That's a normal reaction to that kind of pressure tactic. A go to the balcony way to respond to this one could be for you to use your soft skill of active listening and then state your own position. That would sound something like, I understand it's important for you to ask that. Unfortunately, I'm not prepared to share that information right now. But Jean asked, what if the recruiter keeps on pressuring me though? What if they ask something like, well, when will you be prepared to share whether you have other offers? Ugh. I said, good question. You could say something that actually strengthens your position, like, I'll be prepared to discuss your offer in more detail as soon as I finish evaluating all the options. This is another response that strengthens your position by telling them that you have multiple options. Even if one of your options is your BATNA, your best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Jean let out a deep breath of relief. Oh. <laughs> she said, wow, when I brought these three pressure tactic questions to the cohort today, I was feeling trapped and like I didn't have any options. But now that you've laid this out in terms of a go to the balcony strategy, I'm seeing that I have many more options than I thought. Using the go to the balcony strategy gives me confidence that I have a way to just let off steam for many of these pressure tactics and step back, take a deep breath, and recenter myself. Thanks, Kelly. Now it's your turn. Note down any pressure tactics that you may have experienced, whether in salary negotiations or elsewhere. And then using the principle that you learned here of go to the balcony, Note down phrases that you could say to diffuse that pressure and give yourself some breathing room and put yourself in a stronger negotiating position. So the purpose of this sprint was to prepare you to handle pressure tactics in salary negotiations. By now you should understand the negotiation approach called go to the balcony, as well as approaches and language based on that that you can use to handle pressure tactics and even some dirty tricks. <laughs>